First Peter chapter five. We're going to start reading with verse six. If you're there, say amen. amen. First Peter chapter five, verse six. The Lord speaking through Peter says in verse six, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Now, notice what he wants to do, that he may exalt you in due time. Verse 7, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Then he tells you to be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, he's not a roaring lion, he's as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. How do you stop him? Whom resists steadfast in the faith. Notice as it's, it's done. Whom you resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. I want to go back to verse 6. Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Now, the only way he can do the next verse is if you, uh, the, way, the only way he can do verse 6 is if you do verse 7. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. A title of this message is The Cure for Care. So many people caring about things they don't need to care about at all. Even though they may hear devastating reports, even though things don't seem like they're working right, things are going wrong, very few things going right. Even when everything's going right, a lot of people are carrying care. But the Lord said if you want to be exalted in due time, he can't lift you up with that burden on you. Now, I want you to write this down. Don't function under the burden of a care. Why? Let me say it again. Don't function under a burden of a care. That is a form of pride. Write that down. See, when you begin to take on, pri- uh, take on care, you're taking on pride. You're saying you can handle something that God should handle in your life. Don't function under the burden of a care. That is a form of pride. Humble souls find it easy to cast care away. How do you, how do you work the cure of care? By humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Now see, some of you have problems with your finances and you're trying to figure out how to make everything work. That's a form of pride. When you need to cast that care upon the Lord. Now, if you got yourself in debt, God will get you out. But after a while, you know, you're going to cry wolf one time too many. God expects you to understand how to function in this life as well in the spirit life. So I refuse to function under the burden of a care. That is a form of pride. People said, it seemed like Brother Jesse sweated too much about all that pressure that was coming against him last year in Hurricane Katrina. Oh, it came against us. We had concern, but we cast that care upon the Lord. In fact, when we left this place, we pleaded the blood of Jesus on everything that we could put our hands on. And the Lord protected us. You see what I'm saying? But so many people function under a burden of care. How are we going to do this? How are we going to do that? And like I was talking to a minister the other day, he said, you know, the Lord told me to do something. And I know what his problem was. He was, he was actually working in a form of pride by, ca- by having that care. He said, but how am I going to do that? God wants me to do it. It costs a lot of money. I said, brother, the Lord's not asking you to pay for it. He's asking you to believe for it. You see, he was, he was carrying that care. He was functioning under that burden of care. And by doing that, he took upon the expense of that care. God never asked you to pay for anything. He just asked you to believe for something. All God ever wants you to do is sow a seed and expect the harvest. You see what I'm saying? The harvest will always be bigger than the seed if you understand what God's doing. So let me say it again. Don't function under the burden of a care that is a form of pride. Now people say, but Jesse, you seem like you're happy all the time. Well, I, I may not sound humble, but I am. Humble souls find it easy to cast care upon the Lord. But we're trying to, you see, so many people, the reason why you got so many family troubles is because you cast, you've got the care of your family on you when you should be turning that over to the Lord. Don't know what my boy gonna do. Don't know what my daughter gonna do. You know, my Lord, if I don't help them, they're gonna go under. No, 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 no. See, see, automatically, that's why you're struggling. And you may be keeping them in trouble. When you ought to turn them over to the Lord and let Jesus do what he got to do. And sometimes love is, is tough. It's called tough love sometimes, discipline, but it wakes up some people. It's very easy. I used to burn up all the tires just, uh, just like crazy until I bought my first set. I never forget when the da- my daddy made me buy the first set of tires on that car. You know, I never squeal them tires anymore. People say, boy, you got a lot of power. Yeah, you're just going to have to believe it. Why? Because I ain't buying no more tires. 
You see what I'm saying? So don't function under the burden of a care. That is a form of pride. Humble souls find it easy to cast care upon the Lord. Now, you know, why doesn't God, God says casting your care upon him for he cares for you. He said, in other words, he says, I'll take the care. In other words, that's what he's saying. I'll take the care. Now, the way you do that is by humbling yourself. See, God's trying to get you higher, but this burden is keeping you lower. That's why he says casting that care upon the Lord. Then he tells you not to be dumb and stupid. He says, be sober, be village for your adversary. The devil comes as a roaring lion. In other words, there's a lot of things happening around you that we may, may want you to care, but that doesn't make any difference. God said, if you cast that care upon me, I can carry it for you. Why? Because you can't handle it. Write this down. Carrying care with weak hands is a sure failure. Carrying care with weak hands is a sure failure. If you want to fail in life, just start caring about something that God's supposed to care for. It's a, it's a sure failure. Let me give you a prime example. See, Peter got in trouble. He began to worry about his own body. Now, the Bible says in the scripture that if you deny God, if you deny Jesus before men, he will deny you before God. Is that correct? Scripture said that. Now, you know that Peter denied Jesus three times before men? He, he literally did something very, very wrong when he said, I neither know nor understand the man. Now watch this. See, carrying care with weak hands is a sure failure. Write that down. That's that point. See, he was heading for failure and didn't even realize he was. So all of a sudden, it, when he carried the care of his own body on him, his own life, immediately he got in major trouble. He began to fail because carrying care with weak hands is a sure failure. Now he denies Jesus three times. Jesus said, any man that deny me, anybody that denied Jesus before men, I will deny them before God. So that accusation or actually the evidence was that Jesus had to legally deny Peter before God. So why did Jesus said, go tell my disciples and Peter that I'm alive? Why did he, why did he section out Peter? There was a reason for Peter because Peter had an accusation. He didn't have circumstantial evidence. He had physical evidence that Jesus was going to have to deny Peter before God. Because if you deny Jesus before men, he would deny you before God. So Jesus said, go tell my disciples and Peter. Oh, this is good stuff. Watch this now. Watch this glory to God. Jesus said, I got to fix this. I got to fix it. So he goes down and he sees Peter. Now notice this. He asked Peter three different times. Peter, lovest thou me? Peter, lovest thou me? Peter said, yeah, Lord, I love you. He said, feed my sheep. And then again, he comes up to him, Peter, 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 lovest thou me? You know I love you, Lord. Feed my sheep. Number two. Then he says it again, Peter, Peter, lovest thou me? And he gets a lyric to, yeah, I love you, Lord. He said, feed my sheep. Why did Jesus say, lovest thou me three different times? Because Peter denied Jesus three different times. Jesus made Peter say, do you love me? Three different times. He canceled the denial so that he could present Peter as the, as the leader of his band of disciples. Somebody shout somebody. Do you see that? And not a blessing. He had to go down there and get rid of that evidence of denial before the father. He said, if I can get down to Peter and ask him if he loved me three times, it'll cancel out his three denials with his three loves. Oh, Lord Jesus. What, what, but what made him do all that was the care of his own body, the care of that he might get killed. See, so carrying care with weak hands is a sure failure. So Jesus asked him three different times. So he now he could say, Peter. He my head disciple because now he can't. Jesus cannot deny Peter before God because he forgave him of the three denials with the three times that he asked him to love him. Isn't that good stuff? See, that's the cure for care. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, see, keeping your care, write this down, keeping your care produces a division of faith between God and yourself. Let me say it again. Keeping your care produces a division of faith between God and yourself. Sometimes your faith is not strong because you divided your faith because of the care that you carry between God. God says, I'm trying to help you. It's kind of like when you try to do something for your child and they won't let you do it. And you could get done real quick. No, 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 no. And you know they're going to spill it or tie a knot in the shoe. And you got to show them how to do all this. See, it brings a division between you and them. And it causes trouble for them, not for you. 
because you have the answer. So when I keep care upon me, it causes a division between my faith, between God and myself. Let me say it again. Keeping your care produces a division of faith between God and yourself. So i tell you what, I could care less. That's why I say I could care less. People say, well, that's not, that's not right. No, that's very scriptural to not to care. No, you, not caring doesn't mean you don't love people, but you don't take on something that you can't handle because your hands are too weak to carry it. You're heading for sure failure. You know, most, a lot of people, when they go to get married, they make a provision for failure. I'll love you as long as it lasts. <laughs> what? I love you as long as it lasts. What do you mean last? This is forever, baby. You understand? Take pictures. I, I'm going to be young, but I'm going to be old. You see my point? When you understand it, you're already making a provision. You're already caring about your marriage when you ought to be loving your marriage. So don't function, number one, under the burden of a care. That is a form of pride. Humble, humble souls find it easy to cast care away. Number two, carrying care with weak hands is sure failure. Peter denied Jesus three times, which gave Jesus evidence to deny him before the Father. But Jesus said, love us thou me three times and canceled all the denials so that he could praise him before the Father. And then number two, three, keeping your care produces a division of faith between God and yourself. A lot of people say, why are you so happy all the time? But you seem like you can believe for the impossible. I refuse to take the care of it. I refuse to take the care of it. I make a mama. You know, I'm going to get on a plane this afternoon and fly to Houston. I got to. Now, you know, I'm going to cast all the care upon David and upon Andrew to fly that plane. It'd be very stupid for me to go down there and try to grab the controls. You said that would be dumb. Do you know that's what a lot of people do with their own lives spiritually? God trying to get you from point A to point B and you grabbing the controls. You see my point? Even though I own the plane, he works for me. I do not work for them. They work for me. But that doesn't mean I'm stupid. They have an expertise that I don't have. So I allow them to function in it so that we don't have to care, just be careless. I've had other people say, take care. I said, no, thank you. I'm not taking any care. I'm careless. Get my point? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, but what about if you get a bad report? I, I don't deny it. I just don't take the care of it. And notice the word cast. I mean, there were several times people said, you ever worried about your daughter messing up? No. Because if she did, I'd forgive her. That wasn't the issue, but I certainly wasn't believing for it. And I wasn't making a provision for her to mess up. You say, I just cast that care upon the Lord. That doesn't mean I wasn't concerned. Concern's a whole nother thing. But I'm saying I was concerned, but I wouldn't take the care of it. You follow what I'm saying? Why? Because carrying care with weak hands is a sure failure. See, so I didn't want that division between God and me concerning my faith. And that's what, and Peter is very qualified to tell us about this. Because, you know, Peter, <laughs> but he carried that and got him in major, major trouble. Now write this down. To cast our care on him is to make his will the guide and measure of ours. To cast the care of, uh, let me say it again, to cast our care on him is to make his will the guide and measure of ours. See, when you cast your care upon the Lord, notice your, you make his will your will. And all of a sudden, his will becomes your measure of life. You see what I'm saying? Now, that doesn't mean the devil, the devil, the devil don't come against you, that, that, that the trouble don't start somewhere, and, but it also finishes somewhere. But I'm not concerned about it. I made up my mind. I just made up my mind. Bless God, I'm not concerned about it. People worry a lot of time. See, they get, it's a form of pride. See, they're always trying to fix something. And it's okay to fix it, but a lot of times you can't fix it, so you let the Lord fix it. I cannot produce enough money to run Jesse the Planet's ministries. I cannot. It takes millions and millions of dollars. But you know what I did? I cast the care upon it on, over the Lord. Because if I try to make the money to operate this church and to operate JDM, oh, Jesus, it's going to fail. Because what I'm doing this morning right now, I am spending bunches of money. Millions of dollars are flying out of my hand right now because I'm, I'm preaching all over the world. It is going out. man. It's like that air conditioning. Just sucking money out of my pocket. But I cast that care upon the Lord. The Lord said form a partnership. Why? Because God needed a junior partner when he created the earth. That was called Adam. Well, bless God, when I came into ministry, I realized that I needed a partner. That I needed partners. And he said, believe me, for one million partners, and you can add one billion people to the telecast. Lord Jesus. Man, I'm working nine and a nothing. He said, well, do hundred and nothing. 
You see my point? Casting all you care. Well, you might die. <laughs> well, I'll go to heaven. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> but I mean, if that's what you're believing for me for, would you, cre- would you please quit believing? Why don't you believe for me that I won't be tired? Why don't you believe I'm a blessed God boy? For a man your age, you got some energy. Instead of saying, boy, I'll tell you one thing, Lord Jesus, I did. he's going to kill himself. <laughs> and you think you're caring when you say that. No, you're putting a curse up. But hey, don't curse your children. For God's sake, don't curse your grandchildren. Oh, don't let them go out in the street because the bus will hit them. <laughs> well, you teach them not to go in the street. You understand what I'm saying? Man, you'd be surprised how you can put something on your kid. You didn't realize you was doing it because you think you were being nice. That wasn't you were being stupid. The devil says, ah, we can act on those words and blame God for it. Mm-hmm. To cast our care on him is to make his will the guide and measure of ours. I love that. So when I cast all that care upon the Lord, that's my cure. See, by humbling myself. It's a very humble thing to cast your care upon the Lord. Because most of the time you think you can handle it, but it fails. Because you're carrying it with weak hands. Are y'all enjoying this this morning? Oh, Lord Jesus. See, some of y'all worried about your bills. Well, they're your bills. <laughs> you made them. Now you want God to pay for them. <laughs> and he don't mind doing that a few times, but after a while, enough's enough. It's like you get enough with your kid messing up. After a while, you got to change some things. You don't say you like it. Nobody likes it. That's not it. If you enjoy disciplining your child, something wrong with you. If you enjoy spanking a kid, you don't want, you need a healing in your spirit. Something wrong. You, you see what I'm saying? But there is such a thing called discipline. It has to happen. Why? So that person can be a responsible person in their community. So write this down. How do, well, first, let me say this. How do I get this care to start with? How is it established in my life? Write this down. Care is established by estimating things from your point of view. That's how you establish care. You estimate that from your point of view when you ought to be looking at it through the eyes of God instead of your eyes. So you estimate, well, I don't want to. What is an estimate anyway? It's a lucky guess. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? We're going to estimate your call, the repairs to be. Huh? Has they ever come in under the estimate? No. It's always over. Because an estimate comes from your point of view. What does the Lord say about that? You see, when a sickness and disease attacks itself to your body, immediately, see, that's what hospitals are trained to do and doctors. Nothing wrong with that. Thank God for doctors. Because a doctor's fighting the same devil you are. He's fighting him from the physical side. You're fighting him from the spiritual side. So I'm not being critical of that. But what happens is they're going to give you an estimate. Well, he may only be able to live a few months. There have been people that have said that they've still been living for seven years. Then there's some that didn't even make it a month. Why? Because it's a point of view. You see what I'm saying? But that's how care is established. Write it down. Care is established by estimating things from our point of view. Beware of imaginary thoughts. When something crazy comes in your mind, say, that's not my thought. That's not a good thought. My thoughts are lovely, just good, report, pure, virtuous. Think on these things. I'm doing a little teaching this morning. I'm glad you're quiet because you're listening. Because I know this is hitting. Because y'all got a lot of cares. See? See, casting care is established or it's created by estimating things from our point of view. Now, but, but Jesse, how do you stop it? Write this down. Your words must not be trusted to impulse. Mm-mm. They must be carefully regulated by principles. Your words should not be trusted to impulse. They must be carefully regulated by principle. See, I'm a man of principle. That's what keeps me. You know why? <laughs> well, let me just say this. I made up my mind when I read a scripture in Psalms that I wanted to happen in my life. It was a wonderful verse. And it came from the lips of King David. And when he said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. I took that upon me. Now my seed is Jody Duplantis Walker, who is married to Eddie Walker, who's not my son-in-law, but my son, because he's in the family. An in-law can become an outlaw. You know. But if you make him a son, it makes a difference. I read that. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. 
Well, I'm righteous. The Lord made me righteous. Or his seed begging bread. I said, you know, I'm going to live this righteous cause in my life. I'm not going to take the care of the future of my son and my daughter in my life. Because if I live the righteous cause, which is favor, Psalms 35, 27, let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Got that? Then they will never have to beg for bread. I want that scripture to be a part of my life. I want it to be a part of my destiny and a part of my destination. And that has come to pass. Jody and Ed don't have to beg for nothing. They go get what they want. If you're looking at it in the natural, they go get what they want. Well, because you're their dad. No, it ain't got anything to do with me. It has to do with their faith. You see what I'm saying? It begins to function. And so in, at the time of this preaching, in 28 years of full-time ministry, I've never had a financial deficit, which is an amazing thing. Why? Because I always lived the righteous cause. I expected favor. I expect it. Then as I grew, oh, and I'm going to make some of y'all mad when I say this. As I grew older in the Lord, I demanded favor. I demanded that, that God hath given the earth to the children of men. I'm one of the children of men. Hey, it's mine. You see what I'm saying? So I quit estimating things by my point of view. Because that'll produce a care in my life. And when God says, now, you got to get this. Remember, I told you earlier that, you know, that if you function on a burden of care, it's a form of pride. You see, that's why he said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Do you see that? There's a reason for that. Why? He's trying to get that care out of your life. So I made up my mind. <laughs> I never forget. I did not let the contractor or the architect tell me how much these buildings were going to cost. Because the estimations was way over what it cost. And they were right in the solar shrimp. I determined to let God tell me what this place would cost. Oh, God, that's good stuff. I did not let the jet people tell me what it was going to cost for me to buy my plane. When I sell my plane, I don't let the market determine what I'm going to sell it for. Oh, somebody shout. Do you hear what I'm saying here? That's an estimate. And they're doing that because the same thing with a house. Well, they, this one sold down the street for this. Now, I don't care if I, I ain't down the street. I buy anything at my price or I walk away. Do you see my point? Now, watch it. I, be, <laughs> I let God determine what this place would cost. And when I told the architect, and the con, they went, oh, just, you just can't do it. You got to tie your marble here, man. You go, oh, you're looking at a lot of money here. <laughs> See, that's care. Care is established with your estimation. Or let me just say it perfectly. Care is established by estimating things from our point of view. I refuse to do that. Now, when I said what God said, they all went crazy. But it came to pass, didn't it, Ricky? Well, it's the same thing with the jet. Well, you're going to pay this, you're going to pay that. When I sold my other plane, well, you know, you just can't do this, you can't do that. It's going to take you nine months to 18 months to sell it. I sold it in 30 minutes. Well, I didn't take their estimate. Because it would produce care in my life. This is the cure for care. Now, how did I do that? My words were not trusted to impulse. Oh, okay. But I'm carefully regulated by principle. I love that. You see, your words must not be trusted to impulse. They must be carefully regulated by principle. What is the principle? What the Lord said. You see what I'm saying? Oh, God, this is good stuff. I'm a, I'm a, can I finish this thing a little? Give me a few minutes of this. Because if, if you get this, oh, Jesus, you're going to have a happy day. A happy week, a happy year, a happy life. Happy days are here again. Da -da -da -da. Yeah. See, I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. Mm, mm. Mm -hmm. See, when you understand what I'm saying, then you'll understand this. Write this down. Faith in God will produce faith in man and in yourself. Right. Yeah. See, some of you, the reason why you got care because you don't have faith in yourself. 
See, and then when you have faith in yourself, there's some fool tell you it's arrogance. No, you just believe in who you are. You just believe in who you are. You know what you can do. You know what you can't do. Right? So believe it. Faith in God. Let me just say it again. Faith in God will produce faith in man and in yourself. So once I cast the care upon it over the Lord, all knew what God had. I, I, I didn't go by estimation. Then I let man do what he does. But I kept them not from what they thought it should cost in terms of this building, but what God said. How many times I said that? The Lord said I'd build it for seven million and I'd come under budget. How many times I said it? Rick, if I said it once, I said it, what, a hundred times? A thousand times. I guess over the expansion of building, over the expansion of time of building this place. See, I would not allow that because, see, what the devil was trying to do is me take the care of it. See, I don't take the care of my television ministry on me. I can't afford it. So I don't try. He didn't ask me to pay for it. He asked me to believe for it. So I said, okay. I just went like a child. Okay. And it just drive the devil crazy. The boy ain't cared about nothing. No. Why? Cast it. Well, why, why'd you do that? So I can get exalted. How do you get exalted? By humbling myself. That ain't humbling us. Oh, yeah, it is. Why? I'm looking down on you, aren't it? Why are you down there and I'm up here? I don't mean that in a rude sense, but I'm saying, hey, wait a minute. I ain't trying nothing. Trying to cost a lot of money. It don't work. I want it to work. So I use the principles of God. I'm not moved by impulse. I don't get excited even if I love something. When I tell Kathy, when we go buying stuff, I said, don't you get excited, woman. Like we were to buy a car years ago. I said, don't act like you're crazy. I said, you just love it. Now, you may love it and be screaming inside, but you don't let that salesman know that and you don't let that owner know that. Because they're going to say, well, you know, Eli, why don't you put down a deposit and allow it be, because if it don't, it may be sold. Well, sell it. They go, it hurts them when you say, so sell it. I'll get another. Somebody in the world got another. Uh, uh. Now, after you cut the deal and you sign the dotted line, then you shout, come on, Jesus. Hey, 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 no. <laughs> Woo! Boy, I mean, Kathy did it too. Well, she could do it one time. Boy, I want this call so bad, I could spit. This was years ago. She said, I said, all right, you ready? She said, we're ready. We went in there, Lord. And the guy said, ma'am, if you, you have to put $500 for the positive time now to hold it. She said, well, just sell it. We'll get another one. Oh, well, you don't like the call? Oh, yeah, well, she loved the call. She's going crazy. I love the call. She said, well, we'll just get another one. Just sell it. Don't matter. Just let's go to lunch. Oh, wait, 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 wait. We'll hold it for you. Thank you. Then I told the guy, I said, the Lord told me to pay, pay this price. I don't figure the guy, he went, boy, the Lord cuts a good deal, don't he? <laughs> I said, hey, he's Jewish. <laughs> now I said, are you going to disobey God and try to sell it higher? Do you want to go to hell over a sale of a car? <laughs> <laughs> you laugh. I bought that car for my price. See, faith in God will produce faith in man and in yourself. See, write this down. Casting your care on God is life's greatest lesson. Casting your care upon the Lord is life's greatest lesson. Oh, Jesus, it really is. I want everybody to look at this piano. This is not the piano. I want, but, but I, I'll use this as an example. I wanted a piano in my home many, many years ago. Okay? I don't know how many years ago it was. It's a good, probably 15, I guess, 18, something like that. It was a little black piano, Yamaha. No, Kauai, Kauai piano. Watch this. So I wanted, I wanted a certain, because I play piano and I like a certain action and all that kind of stuff. Finally, I found the piano. So they look at me and they said, Reverend Duplantis. <laughs> now I've learned something that also cash is king. Cash is king. Cash gets people's attention. You start waving money, people do this. <laughs> if you do it with a check, man, but if you got cash. So I walk into this store. I said, oh, Kathy, look at this piano. Look at it. Boy, I mean, they, and they had a real good sale price on but it was the last one. Now, when it's the last one, they were, uh, they were not going to carry that brand anymore because it was too expensive to carry that brand. They wanted a cheaper brand, which I didn't like. I wanted this brand. So I walk in there. Now, this plan, piano was $13,000, I think. What's that, babe? Huh? I can't hear you. You can talk loud. No, this is Kauai. Not a Yamaha. She's speaking in tongue. Yamaha, Yamaha. 
Well, it's not a Yamaha, it's a Kauai. Yeah. So, now watch the care begin to get on Kathy. I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. They said, sir, we got it down from 13,000 to 9,800 bucks. That was a good deal. I said, it's your last one. Yes, sir. I said, you're not carrying this anymore. Right. He said, yeah, because, you know, we want to buy, uh, because most people don't, can't spend that much money on a piano. So we're going to go to a, 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 good, a good piano, but it's not the same quality. I said, well, I sure like it. He said, well, I, we, we'd like you to have it. I said, I'll buy anything at my price. And I saw Kathy go, oh, Lord, here it comes. I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll give you $6,000 for it. Oh, oh, <laughs> no, that can't be done. I said, well, have a nice day. No, no, wait, 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 wait. He said, I can't, that, that's impossible. I said, well, then I'm not going to apologize if I'm taking your time. And I reached in my pocket. I pulled out $6,000, Tommy, in $100 bills. Sack words. Watch what I did. I said, now I want you to watch this. Come here, young man. Come here. And I took the $100 bills and I placed it all over the thing. The $100 bills all over the piano. I said, now, now, you can have that and I can have this. If you don't want it, what you're going to do? Oh, I, I got to call my boss. Kathy said, he came back, he says, 65. Kathy goes, I said, no. She said, come here, just come here. You going to let that piano go for, for $500? I said, you right, mama. Just, you can. I said, I rebuked that care in the name of Jesus. Go on. I mean, when I rebuked it, it went off of her like white on rice. Choo. I said, now, sir, the man come out, he said, man, there's blood all over the floor here. Man, you you're draining me bad. I said, I ain't draining you. You don't have to do this. This is what I got. You want it? Now, if you don't want it, I understand that. He said, we can't do that. When I, I said, okay, I reached for the money. When I reached for the money, his hands was on my hands. <laughs> <laughs> he thought, my God, I can't believe I'm doing this. I said to myself, I can <laughs> He said, okay. And Kathy said, you will put, th that includes the piano bench, doesn't it? Oh, I want to see she lost all her care. The bench, the bench, ma'am, is $350. Yeah, you, you, that's included in the piano because people don't stand up and play a piano. He goes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's fine too. I said, can you deliver it today? Oh, Jesus. I still had one hand on my money. He goes, get it out of here right now. Do you know they delivered that? It was at my house within an hour and a half. Now, was, no, he still made money. He didn't make a lot of money. But you see, what happened was, God bless me. If I'd have took on that care, you mean you'd have walked away for five? You better know how to walk. Well, I'll walk away for $2. I don't care. Did you hear me? I don't care. I'm careless. <laughs> Casting your care on God is life's greatest lesson. Oh, I mean, that thing came in my house. Oh, Lord, gee, I played it, boy. I mean, and you know, I seen that man two or three years ago. He said, Mr., you the best deal cutter I've ever seen in my life. I said, you know, you still made money. He said, yeah, I did. He said, I had it up the, uh, the uh, what do they call it, the markup over 100% and all that kind of stuff. He said, but I, man. He said, how's that piano doing? I said, it's doing wonderful. He said, do you know you can sell that piano for more than you bought it? <laughs> ten years? <laughs> You've had it over ten years. You can still sell. I said, you want to buy it? <laughs> he said, y y you want to sell it? I, I saw him. See, because pianos have went up a lot more. I said, no, thank you. I'm going to just keep it. Thank you. We just laugh. See, casting your care on God is life's greatest lesson. That's why all he wants to do is exalt you. Now write this down. Our Christian faith is not simply a body of doctrines. It's a provision of grace. You see, a lot of time people look at this Bible, they just think of it as doctrinal issues and statements and dictates. No, it's a provision of grace. 
See, that's the grace. That's wonderful. That's great grace when God says, cast your care upon me for I care for you. I'll take the care. Let me say it again. Our Christian faith is not simply a body of doctrines. It is a provision of grace. God's just trying to bless you, man, by getting this heaviness off of you. You see what I'm saying? But a lot of people just look at the scriptures like, well, you know, it's just, you know, what, what do you believe in what you don't believe in? And most of the time, it's what you don't believe in. See, they're trying to come up with some doctrinal bondage. When this Bible sets you free, whom the Son is set free is free indeed, right? Is that right? Whom the Son is set free is free indeed? Think about that. So every time you read the Bible, it shouldn't put, it shouldn't put restrictions on you. It, it ought to cause freedom to come into your life. Let me say it again. Our Christian faith is not simply a body of doctrines. It's a provision of grace. Now write this down. Heavy yokes of life cease to rub and press against you when God bears them. See, you remember Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me? When you cast your care upon the Lord, your cross gets a lot lighter. Heavy yokes of life cease to rub and press against you when God bears them. Take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Your cross is lightened. See what I'm saying? All God's trying to do is make, let me tell you what God wants to do to all you that are watching all over the world. God wants to make it easier for you. Church wants to make it harder for you. I hate to say that, but that's the truth. God wants to make it easier for you. Church wants to make it harder for you. Trying to get you in God lines and concepts and things that bless God. They can't even do themselves. Why did God give the law? Because he knew man could not fulfill it. Man figured, well, I'll tell you, all I need is a law to live by. If I have a law, and you know what? If I abide by this law, then it don't make no difference. And they couldn't abide by the law. It showed you that you needed grace. That's why God gave us the New Testament. But that doesn't mean the law is thrown away. Thou shall not kill is still in operation. Thou shall not commit adultery is still in operation. See what I'm saying? But he gave you the law because he knew you couldn't hold it. You couldn't hear it. You couldn't answer it. You couldn't live by it. <laughs> Heavy yokes of life cease to rub and press against you when God bears them. That's what he means by casting your care. Your cross is lightened. So it just makes, he's just trying to make it easier for you. Now I want to say this in close and I want everyone to listen to me because it's very, it's this very small word and it's easily looked over. Look at first Peter chapter five, verse seven again, casting all your care upon him for he careth for you. You see that little word all? It's probably one of the smallest words with one of the smallest words in the verse other than he. All. Write this down. The little word all includes even the trivial and passing anxieties of each day. The little word all includes even the trivial and passing anxieties of each day. The little things. He wants it all, not some, all. Now, brother, if you get what I speak this morning, you're going to start spiritually levitating, exalting. Oh, geez, your due time has now come to pass. You see what I'm saying? You're coming up because there's nothing heavy holding you down. Do you realize how powerful that is? Do you know... <laughs> <laughs> so that just the least little wind can keep a cloud from coming down. Just a very little, a, a huge, heavy cloud of rain. Very little wind can keep it from coming down. Doesn't take much. But you say, oh, well, that, that's kind of silly. I ain't worried about those little things. It's the little foxes that spoil the vine. Let me say it again. The little word all includes even the trivial and passing anxieties of each day. You see what I'm saying? This is the cure for care. And the reason God wants to do this, so he can exalt you. Now, how does he exalt you? By, by you humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. And then the next verse makes sense. Just be sober, be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith. 
Faith is in the spirit, beliefs in the mind, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. In other words, they're having some trouble, but it doesn't make no difference. You cast your care upon the Lord. We win. We win. Or let me help you. We've won. You see what I'm saying? Now, I could preach a whole series on this, but I wanted to give that to you. And I might go preach it somewhere, maybe do a whole series on because I could I, I went there's some there's some powerful points there. See, just the little things of life is what can hold you down. You see, just the little thing. Do you know if we get a five mile an hour wind, we can land at an airport. I don't care how much fog's out there. It'll blow it out. But the minute that thing becomes still and the temperature, the dew point comes, here come. Wham. And I've seen it just close in on the airport when we were coming down. Literally hit that runway and all of a sudden she closed down. Oh, you got to hit the brake because you can't really see nothing. But you could see it and just in a matter of seconds it seemed like. See, so God don't want you carrying care. Why? Because carrying care with weak hands is a, <laughs> a sure failure. Now, we prayed for those people and we're believing in God. We're not going to, we, we don't cast the care upon all this sickness and junk that's been happening. I've cast the care and the burden of any kind of financial problems in your life. That you don't make a living, you make a giving. But your giving produces your living. And don't worry about, I might have enough money to retire. Because you start what? You, 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 you're going to destroy everything you, that you believe for. You see what I'm saying? And when you understand that, you're being a walk in that. This stuff will work for you. Will it work today? Yeah, if you can receive it today. See, you may have heard it today, but can you receive it today? You got to let that meditate and concentrate and get that inside of you. Amen. Glory to God. When you understand that, God will honor you and bless you. And every, I'm, I, I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, cover the church. Listen to me. If you listen to what I say, you keep your giving. You are a giver, a tither. You will get to a point that finances will never be a care in your life. God will take a dollar of yours and stretch it. Well, God took my $6,000, Pia, and stretched it to $13,000 piano. Oh, that included the tax. <laughs> and a piano bench. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Oh, I have to make a lot of money. No, God can take your minimum wage and make it buy more than someone making $15 an hour. It's amazing what God will do if you just let him. But he can't do it if you're holding that care in your hand. He can't do it. He, well, he will break your will to do it. But when you do that, then his will, your will, that's the measure of your life. So I've had a lot of people. Someone told me this is last week. Oh, brother Jesse, how are you going to make it? How are you going? How are you doing? How are you doing? I said, it's amazing how many people worry for me and I don't worry at all. They call it worry what? But it's just a worry what? Just worry. I got people so concerned about my face. I said, something wrong with my face. How many people asked me the other day, a Friday, are you going to get a facelift? <laughs> how many, Kathy? I don't know how many. So, are you going to get a facelift? <laughs> I heard it hurts. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with a facelift. If that make you feel better, do it. That don't bother me. That's okay. I don't have it. Will you do it? As of right now, I don't think so. But hey, I ain't gonna never say never. I don't know. I hadn't thought about it. Do I? Am I saggy? Do I look like a Sharpe dog? <laughs> yeah, I love a Sharpe dog. I do. I bring it all over. And this thing's starting to hang. Down. Look at that thing. I can see it. And Michael John said I could have it sucked up and pulled back. I Michael just said, "Y'all just kind of pull it back. Just pull it back. Just pull that back." All Kathy got to do is grab me by the back of my neck. <laughs> Just walk with me like you do a blood arrow. <laughs> she said she need both hands. <laughs> but I don't have hot flashes. <laughs> don't open it up, mama. Don't open this can. <laughs> I know what she's thinking. Oh, yeah, you do. We ain't talking about that, mama. <laughs> Don't let that white hair fool you. Talk to me, baby. Oh. Hey, my. <laughs> 
Hallelujah. I always think so, I don't think. But if I did, fine. If I don't, I, you know, I just, I'm not really that concerned about that. I mean, I don't look at my body as much as other people do. You know, you need a pedicure. You need a manicure. Which, which, which one's what? The pedicure's down there. I don't even know. Hey, where, where's the pedicure? The pedicure's the toenails? Okay, I looked at my hand. I said the pedicure. I don't know. You can tell I don't know about that. You need to be exfoliated. You got blackheads on your nose. Oh, you got <laughs> veins are coming out on your nose. Okay. I don't care. Do you need to fix it? Well, maybe so. I don't. I guess it'll please other people. People say, you know, I can get rid of them. Black All you got to do is just smash your face and they just come out. You hurt like crazy. You ever been to a dentist that didn't hurt you? We're going to clean your teeth. No, they're going to hurt you, man. Three days after cleaning, you're going. <laughs> but it's good to get them clean. <laughs> I didn't worry more about my. Kathy said, you need, you need a manicure. Would you like to have a pedicure? Nah. <laughs> but it makes your toes look good. Toes are toes. <laughs> I don't care. You ever see beautiful women got the ugliest toe? Yes, they were a little long. But their nails are pretty. Look at my nails. Yeah, but look at that toe that, that sticks out like that. that it might have a pretty nail on, but the, it look. <laughs> you know, look, <laughs> y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> see that beautiful girl in the foot half sideways like that? Got them bunions and what? <laughs> oh, God, I don't know what all that. All oh, but them nails look good. But if you like that, hey, I'm not critical, I'm not against it. Hey, do it, do it. Bless the Lord. Just do it, just do it. <laughs> I just laugh myself. Kathy says, you know, you need to get this stuff because it'll exfoliate you. How much is that, $122? I said, Kathy, I'll borrow lava soap for 15 cents. Or <laughs> take the skin off to the skull. That's exfoliation, you understand? <laughs> <laughs> need some, need some pumice here. <laughs> pumice. What pumice? Pumice. I don't know what it is. Okay, I said it wrong. She loves it. I made a mistake. 36 years of marriage, I made my first mistake. No. <laughs> well, I said pumice. Kathy calls Parmesan Parmesan. <laughs> she said, I'll have some Parmesan cheese. They said, what did you say? I'll have some Parmesan cheese. I said, it's a, a, a Parmesan. Oh, Parmesan cheese. Ah, yes, she's from England. <laughs> Parmesan. Pumas, pumas, I don't know. Cast all you care. You don't get, you don't get, Kathy don't get angry with you sometimes? Oh, when you say those kinds of Do you see me sweating it? Huh. I cast all my care upon the Lord. And vice versa, because I know when she gets up there, she's going to nail me to the wall, <laughs> which I deserve. I kind of like it. They don't bother me in the least. I could care less. Why? I'm careless. I found the cure for care. Give Jesus a hand clap. Stand to your feet. Come on, give him a standing ovation. He deserves it today. <laughs> Glory. I got to write this sermon up here. Glory to God. I just wrote notes. Did y'all enjoy that? I got that at 830 this morning. Oh, I just went to writing. <laughs> Kathy said, we got to hurry up. Got to be ready to go to church. That's okay. <laughs> but I believe it was perfect for today. How many of you have some care? Let's be honest. Come on. Lift your hand up. You have some care. Hold it, hold it up. I want to see it. All right. Now put your hand down and take the person's hand next to you. I know I've kept you a little long. It's 12, 15, 12, 18. Father, I come against the cares of this world, the cares of life. I rebuke them in the name of Jesus. And Father, I ask you to minister answers to hard, difficult problems this morning. 
And the first way to get it, Lord, is to cast our care upon you. We humble ourselves before you. We recognize that we can't handle this. Because if we hold these cares, that's a form of pride and we will not do that. So, Lord, we cast it away right now. And, Lord, I decree and declare that people in here, that these are happy days ahead. Spiritually, physically, financially. Lord, some may have got devastating reports. But that's all right, Lord. We're going to change the reports. Lord, I ask you to minister graciously to the people today. You had me minister on this wise. God, I knew it was for a reason. Not only was it for them, but it was also for me. That I must constantly be checking myself. That I don't take on something that I don't have, a, that I should not. And Lord, I decree and declare today for everybody. People in here that may not be born again. They cast the care of sin on them. On you right now so you could save them. There's some that are sick here today. They cast that care of sickness upon you, Lord. That by your stripes they were healed. Some are having financial difficulty. They cast that care upon you, Lord. Because they know, God, that you're going to give them an insight, a concept, and an idea on how to get out of that situation. Lord, I decree and declare today by the power of Jesus' name that it's done. Satan, I get great pleasure in telling you to get under these people's feet today. I lift your hands up as an act of faith and receive what the Lord has for you. Your hands are a lot lighter now because the cares have been cast away. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Give the Lord a standing ovation. Come on.